The Philippines is an archipelago country with thousands upon thousands of islands. Defending the country, therefore, is extremely difficult. How can the armed forces of the Philippines ensure that these islands are protected from foreign threats? One particular department, in fact, has even a larger role in the entire defense, the Philippine Navy. The maritime defense of the country has always been criticized by many. The Navy is lacking a lot, whether it be warships or the budget. Most importantly, however, is that the Philippine Navy is lacking submarines, a crucial piece in defending a country's waters. A submarine's role is much needed in the archipelagos of the Philippines, which has an extensive coastline and strategic location in Southeast Asia. But where is it? How can the Philippines emerge with such a necessity, yet still not have a single submarine? Well, the reason why the Philippines does not have submarines yet is because of budgetary constraints. Submarines are incredibly expensive, not just to acquire, but also to maintain and operate. The Philippines, with its limited defense budget, faces a significant challenge in allocating funds for such high-cost assets. The cost doesn't just include the submarines themselves, but also the necessary infrastructure, training, and maintenance facilities. Moreover, it is also important to understand that submarines may not really be a strategic necessity. While submarines can be invaluable in certain situations, they are not always a top priority for every nation. The Philippines, for instance, has been acquiring frigates and warships, which may likely be more important and cost-effective in defending the country's waters. Let's take an example. The Philippines had once ordered back in 2016 for frigates from Hyundai Heavy Industries. The warships had a cost of about 16 billion pesos. These warships now stand as one of the most advanced in the Philippine Navy. In comparison, the submarine budget is over 97 billion pesos. The strategic cost of acquiring advanced warships compared to submarines comes into a huge question on whether it really is worth acquiring these. This is why it took decades upon decades before the Philippines could actually suggest the acquisition of a submarine due to its nature of cost and complexity of use. Now, the recent news about the submarine program for the Philippines has proven the necessity of it. Reuters reported that President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has approved the third phase of the military modernization, a phase that will now include the country's first ever submarine. The article had stated that this was essential in defending the maritime sovereignty of the Philippines in the South China Sea, a topic that has been highly contested in recent years. This third phase of military modernization is massive. According to an official, it will be over 2 trillion Philippine pesos, or 35.62 billion US dollars, which should be enough to help the country acquire its own submarines. Now, there have been countries who offered the Philippines submarines in the past, one of which is South Korea. The Asian Tiger has been one of the Philippines' largest military exporters. The Philippine Navy has deployed world-class from Hyundai Heavy Industries. Korea has also donated ships to the Philippine Navy, which are now being used across the country. Now, submarines are the talk of the two countries. One Korean company, known as Hanwha Ocean, has offered the Philippines a variant of the KSS-3 submarine. The proposed vessel is a diesel-powered submarine and has a surface displacement of about 2,800 tons, with an overall length of 77 meters and an overall beam of 9.7 meters. The submarine will also include a lithium-ion battery, which will allow six days of operations without battery charging. An article published by the Inquirer noted that the Hanwha Ocean is intending to meet the Philippine Navy budget of 97 billion pesos for two submarines. This budget will also include training, technology transfer, safety and integrated logistics support, simulators, and a maintenance yard in Subic Bay or wherever the Navy wants to place the submarine. Further, the deal may also include a loan and a delivery of seven years once the deal is signed. What is even more amazing to know is that Hanwha Ocean previously offered the Philippines its 1,400-ton submarine. This can suggest that the Philippines could have had its own submarine back then, but due to budgetary constraints, it has not. 
Another company, called Naval Group, has also offered submarines to the Philippines. Naval Group hails from France, and they have offered the Scorpion SSK design to the Philippine Navy. The Scorpion class was also previously selected by countries like Brazil, Chile, India, and Malaysia. The variant offered to the Philippines has a 31 crew capacity over 10,000 nautical mile range, and 80-day endurance, surpassing other Scorpions in range and endurance. The submarines can carry 18 munitions, including SM-39 Exocet missiles and F-21 torpedoes, and are capable of intelligence, special operations, and mine laying. The other company hails from Spain. Navantia has proposed to the Philippine Navy a comprehensive package including two S-80 Isaac Peril class diesel-electric submarines, equipped with an air-independent propulsion system for extended underwater endurance. The offer also encompasses the design and construction of a new submarine base and training center in Ormoc Late, chosen for its strategic location and infrastructure. These three proposals are competing head-to-head, -head, each offering similar submarine packages and additional support, including a government-backed financing plan covering 100% of the contract cost. It is important to know that there might be alternative offers in the future and that the Philippines may not even acquire its own submarines. Regardless of what the Philippine government may choose, what matters in the end is that the country actually acquires its own submarines, whether it be in the third phase of military modernization or far into the future. It's important to know that submarines are going to be a vital piece in the maritime defense of the Philippines in the future. And here's why. The first is the West Philippine Sea. Submarines are crucial in patrolling these waters and ensuring the security of crucial maritime routes, vital for both national security and international trade. Secondly, it is also important to understand that the Philippines is now lagging behind its neighbors in terms of submarine capabilities. Acquiring submarines would bring the Philippines up to par with other regional navies. Thirdly, the development of a capable submarine force can boost national pride and demonstrate the Philippines' commitment to defending its sovereignty and maritime interests. And finally, one of the continuous issues in the Philippines is illegal activities. Submarines can aid in the interdiction of illegal activities at sea that may be related to terrorism, such as smuggling of arms, drugs, or human trafficking. Their ability to operate unseen allows them to gather evidence and track suspect vessels without alerting them. These are important in helping ensure the country is well protected and preserved. The only issue that the public needs to know is that two submarines may well not really be enough to put the Philippines into a regional spotlight. Against China, which is a world-leading powerhouse, the Philippines may still need help from its neighboring ASEAN members, as well as the United States if necessary. It should also be known that these submarines may agitate China. Whenever a neighboring country acquires top-notch equipment, for instance, when a potential F-16 deal was offered to Vietnam, Chinese state-owned media Global Times has reported that it may sabotage peace and stability in the region. The article further stated that these deals are part of the U.S. hegemonic goals. Such submarines for the Philippines could likely entice China's government to act against it. This could introduce more problems for the Philippines rather than not, but it is still necessary to have these submarines as they are essential in the future of the country's West Philippine Sea. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.